Welcome. In this video, we will see blast or crack grounding technique for reducing the grounding resistance of a substation. In last video we seen basic methods for decreasing grounding resistance, slanting grounding electrode, and deep ground well method. These techniques videos link is available in description box. In this video we will see blast or crack grounding technique for reducing the grounding resistance of a substation. If a huge deep distributed grounding system is created in the substation area, then the current injected into the grounding system easily scatters to deeper soil layers. At the same time, the area available to disperse fault currents increases, resulting in a decrease in the ground resistance. Realistically, it is difficult to construct a large grounding system within the area defined by most substations. A so-called blast or crack grounding technique was proposed, based on building a grounding system, which extends to great depths to realize this idea. First, several vertical holes are drilled, then appropriate blast agents are introduced into the holes. The resulting blast or cracks create various gaps in the soil. Finally, low resistivity materials are injected into the holes, and cracks under high pressure. As a result, a large number of cracks around the vertical conductors are filled with low resistivity materials, and a large three dimensional grounding network consisting of the grounding conductors and cracks is formed, as shown in figure. The basic idea for this method comes from the usual practice when building the foundations of transmission line towers in rocky regions of triggering blast or cracks in holes and filling them with concrete. It was noticed that these kinds of tower foundations have very low grounding resistances. The low resistivity material is usually an inorganic material, with a resistivity less than 5 ohm meter. The blast or crack course is carefully planned, and the region close to the surface remains intact. The basic principles upon which this blast or crack grounding technique is based are 1. Contacting deep soil layers with low resistivity, it was observed that there are usually layers which either have a low soil resistivity, or are saturated with underground water, in regions with high resistivity. The new method can effectively use these low resistivity layers to decrease ground resistances. 2. Reducing contact resistances, the low resistivity materials, which fill the holes provide a very low contact resistance between grounding conductors and soil. 3. Decreasing the leakage resistance, the measured ground impedance of a grounding system consists of four parts, the impedance of bonding leads, the impedance of grounding conductors, the contact resistance between grounding conductors and soil, and the distributed resistance to remote earth. The first and second parts are very small and can be neglected. The third part is normally ignored during computation and is quite small when low resistivity material are used to decrease contact resistances. Consequently, only the distributed, leakage, resistance is significant. When this method is used, a large network of soil cracks filled with low resistivity material is formed. This network acts like a virtual extension of the grounding system into deeper soils, resulting in lower ground resistances. 4. Links to intrinsic soil cracks, it is known that intrinsic cracks exist in rocky areas. The cracks caused by the explosion often connect with intrinsic cracks in the rock. These intrinsic cracks are typically filled with moisture and usually extend to remote locations. The connected intrinsic cracks and explosion cracks are filled with low resistivity material by high pressure injection. When current is discharged from the grounding system, it can flow to remote locations through the low resistivity soil cracks. Let's see the effectiveness of the blast or crack grounding technique in decreasing grounding resistances. Because the deep distributed grounding system, can connect with deeper low resistivity soil via intrinsic, and explosion cracks filled with low resistivity material, an explosion, and geology factor K should be considered, when computing the resistance of the grounding system.
using the formula for a hemispherical electrode of radius r as shown. The explosion and geology factor k is related to the degree of explosion and geology. For example, k is dependent on the existence of deep layers of low resistivity, the existence of intrinsic cracks, and whether the cracks extend to remote locations, with low resistivity soil. r is a modified equivalent radius, where h is the depth of the deepest hole, and d is the equivalent reach of cracks, which is related to the geological structure in the substation area. In lightly weathered rocky soil, d is in the range 5 to 10 meter. In medium weathered rocky soil, d is in the range 10-15 meter and in heavily weathered rocky soil, d is in the range 15 to 20 meter. From many experimental results, the explosion and geology factor K has been classified into six types according to geological situation. The values are given in table. Balance techniques to be discussed is Using long vertical ground rods Discussed methods videos link is available in description box. Stay tuned we will discuss long vertical ground rods method in next video. Thank you for your attention and time. More stuff coming soon. Don't forget to subscribe.